Hello everyone and welcome back to the D-Heart House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty video channel here on YouTube. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for joining if you're new. Thanks for joining if you're a returning viewer. It's so good to have you here. And yes, sometimes I trip over my words. Uh, <laughs> It's the beginning of June 2022, so it's time to record my May Makes video uh, where I just take you through all the things that I created during the month of May, maybe things I started and didn't finish, plans, all of that great stuff. Um, yeah, I did finish some things this month, which is really nice. <laughs> By the way, I'm coming to you from the Pacific Northwest. I live in Washington State in the United States. And uh, the weather here is a little warm and humid. And it's uh, been raining on and off for the past few days. And by raining in the Pacific Northwest, I do not mean like the misty rain that we usually have that consumes the majority of a day. Uh, but like downpour and then it's sunny and then downpour and then it's sunny. <laughs> Just you really can't plan if you if you need to go outside for any reason, like to drive to the grocery store or to go to work or to do an outside chore or something. I mean, you know how it is. Um, it's, it's that kind of variable uh, spring weather that we're having. Uh, warm to me is in the 70s. Uh, degrees Fahrenheit, by the way. I used to live in um, Texas for a little while, and I would think, oh my gosh, 70 degrees is nothing compared to <laughs> the weather, but, uh, but I'm readjusting back to northern climates, and 70, 70 degrees feels a bit warm, especially since uh, we do not have an air conditioner in our home. We do not have central AC. We will hook up um, a window unit. We have a couple of those that um, help in the summer, especially with that humidity, because it just hangs on to that heat. So. Uh, so yeah, I'm wearing a, a tank top. I have my hair pulled up. Uh, we just finished uh, a really big service at church today. And uh, Michael and I were up singing in the choir and it was up, down and, and fellowship afterward. And, and I won't go into all the details, but I'm like, I need to drink some water and... Uh, off a little bit, which is not something you usually hear from a knitter, but here we are. <laughs> um, yeah, so let me uh, kind of wrap you up on, <laughs> wrap you up, catch you up on what's been going on this month and kind of what will be going on for June, and then I'll get into the, uh, the crafty stuff, which is probably the real reason you're here, so I'll try to go quickly. <laughs> Um, the month of May has been uh, kind to me in terms of work and in terms of my crafts. I've been able to do both uh, in balance, and that's been really amazing. Um, work was quite stressful for a while as I was going through the tenure process, and now that I know that I have earned tenure, I have been able to relax and that stress has been leaving my body and it's been feeling uh, amazing. So uh, I'm very thankful for um, being able to feel that way. Uh, so I have a bit of crafting to show you. Uh, so I teach, um, I'm a college math professor for a living. Uh, so we are not on summer break until July. So I teach through the end of June. So this month, um, I am still teaching. But uh, we don't start back up in the fall until mid-September. 
So uh, there's that, you know, our, our school years shifted a bit later than, you know, let's say um, folks on the East Coast or even with the K-12 system in our own area, we don't all follow the same calendar. So it's just all over the place. But, um, but yeah, so we are in our last few weeks of the quarter, which is when, you know, projects need to be turned in at work, um, you know, wrapping up the quarter with students, having to finalize and process grades. And this year, you guys, we're actually having an in-person graduation ceremony. Yeah, I have been working at the school for three years now. I started in fall of 19, which was the fall quarter before the pandemic started. Uh, and I've been working at this school three years and have never been able to attend a graduation ceremony, except the online webinar version that just doesn't have the same happy feeling effect as going in person. So I'm super excited. Um, I definitely said, yes, I'm going to the ceremony because it's it's a big celebration. And I don't know about you guys, but I could use all the happy celebrations that I can get to make up for two to three years of a lot of crap going on in our lives. So, um, <laughs> yeah. And the really cool thing is that graduation, uh, the graduation ceremonies sounds like it's going to be quite large. So we're going to be at T-Mobile Park in Seattle for the graduation ceremony. Uh, so T-Mobile Park is where the Mariners play uh, baseball. And uh, Michael and I have been to a couple of games at T-Mobile Park. So we're uh, pretty excited that uh, not only do we get to finally go to an in-person graduation ceremony, but it's going to be at a, a really big uh, venue in the area. I think that's super special. So I'll have pictures, I'm sure, <laughs> to share. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so I'm excited for the end of another school year. I'm excited for summer. Um, I don't quite... No, no, no. I will not be working this summer. Uh, I'm possibly taking on more responsibilities at work, but I, I don't know yet. I think it's a position that has to be voted on. Anyway, so I might have to work summers in the future, but not this summer. So I'm going to really enjoy having this summer off of, off of work, off of teaching. Uh, anyway... So some crafting stuff has happened. In particular, uh, I want to start with spinning because that's mostly what I have done. And you can see this big pile of wool right here. It's in a plastic bag, but uh, I've got a pile of stuff and on top is this bag of wool. Uh, I have a lot of wool that I need to get washed and work on processing and that's one of my goals for this summer is to get all my fleeces washed uh, because I, I should not be keeping my dirty fleeces and just storing them until I'm ready I should really be cleaning them uh, first thing so it's one of the things I'm going to be doing this summer um, when the weather is more cooperative than cold and rainy outside um and i could actually have them kind of drying out in the sunlight but yeah i've done a bunch of spinning so let me show you my spinning i um so first thing i finished in the month of may was i, I feel like this was pretty soon into may like the first week or so i don't know uh, but it's this gorgeous, oh, it is just so pretty, these colors and, you know, how they, they barber pole with each other in the hand spun 
it's just it's these blues and greens and a, you know a smidge of uh, some brown in there and it's just very outdoorsy uh, like I said I'm in the Pacific Northwest so it just feels like Pacific Northwest you know being out in the forest with a beautiful river and just all of the things so I love it um, the colorway is called moonwalk it is not a <laughs> outdoorsy Pacific Northwest kind of uh, theme but it's uh, the colorway is moonwalk and this is fiber I purchased from wound up fiber arts and um, if you follow wound up fiber arts on Instagram if you already follow this account you you will know the beautiful fiber that is offered by this maker uh, but if, and if you don't already follow wound up fiber arts on Instagram you should unless you just can't resist temptation and you need to watch your budget but <laughs> I did I did succumb to the temptation so um, so this is the full um, four ounces here and I I made it a two ply uh, this yarn I was going for fingering weight and I I did not achieve fingering weight it is definitely thicker than that let's see I've got about 99 yards in the smaller one here and about hundred forty six yards and this other one so about about 250 yards here in uh, in four ounces so definitely not not fingering weight uh, but it's beautiful nonetheless so I uh, this is a hundred percent superwash merino so there is no um, this is not a blend there's no nylon in here so I was I thought I ordered the merino nylon blend, but I did not. I ordered 100% merino. So originally when I was buying this fiber, I was thinking I was going to make socks. And then I realized I did not get the one with nylon, so already they were not going to be socks. Uh, but, oh gosh, I don't know. Maybe a, maybe a couple of hats for Michael and I. Um, that could be really cool. I don't think I need another shawl. Um, I don't think I'm going to use this in a sweater because honestly, my spin isn't all that consistent. Like, this skein could almost be fingering weight, but this one definitely not. Um, so I feel like hats sound like a good idea because it's a smaller item. Uh, yeah. I don't know. So we'll see. I'm thinking hats. Now that I've shown you, I can play it. I can play with this yarn now in my knitting. So yeah, so I did add uh, a little under uh, 250 yards to my stash in this spinning. Now I also have a stash of fiber. So I took out four ounces from my stash of my overflowing stash of fiber. Yes. Um, I also finished a spin. Um, and I did this all in, yeah, I did this all in the month of May. In fact, it, I did this at lightning speed for me, which is uh, quite ridiculous. But here's what's left over because I did the spin and I knit the object that I intended and this is what I have left over. In fact, I made a whole video about this and I will try to figure out how to put a link to that video right here somewhere on the screen. A link to that video uh, to check out my adventures in spinning a mohair blend for socks. Right. So uh, I picked up this Romney Mohair Blend. I've got the tag right here at the Shepherd's Extravaganza that Michael and I went to this year. You guys, I bought this fiber this year and I spun it up and I knit with it all in the same 
here, which is how I'd like to I'd like to be quicker like that with my turnaround on the things that I purchase instead of having them just linger over here, even though it makes for a beautiful backdrop. Anyway, um, yeah, so it's from the Pines Farm. It's a Romney mohair blend. It's eight, a little over eight ounces uh, total on the fiber. As you can see, it was a, an amazing deal. Um, and so what I did is I, I spun up a couple of samples. Like I said, I go through this in the video. But ultimately, I decided to um, prep the fiber into Rolex. So I still have a bit left over here. Are there, oh my gosh, I still have another layer underneath this. Look at, look at all of this. This is a um, uh, just a fabric box from, uh, from Dollar Tree. And uh, they, some of them fit in these bins here, which is quite nice. But uh, yeah, it's uh, this beautiful orange, uh, orange and yellow uh, blend. And yellow is my favorite color. And it just seemed so happy um, that I wanted to have it. So that's what I purchased. And so I spun up about three ounces into a skein and I made a three ply. So I had one ounce on each of and made a three ply. This was my first ever traditional three ply where you actually have three bobbins as opposed to a chain ply. Uh, and I love it. Uh, so I ran this little experiment I was testing a few things, and uh, one of them being making a traditional three ply, which is awesome. So, uh, do I know that yardage? I do not remember the yardage on that skein, so I'll put it here on the screen. So, I did add this yardage to my stash because I did spin it into a three ply yarn. And like I said, I have a little bit left over, but most of it um, I knit into a pair of socks. And I have been wearing these because this is now the next phase in the experiment. And that's how, uh, how do my uh, socks hold up to normal wear and tear of, of actually using uh, the socks. So because these are made out of all natural fibers, there being no nylon or something else in there that's synthetic, uh, I've been... Well, when I put them on my feet and I put on my shoes and I go to work, I don't do anything different. Like I'm just wearing socks and shoes at work and I don't even think about it because I'm focused on work. So that I've been doing the same but um, but I have not been washing them in the machine like I wash my other socks. I have been hand washing them, so I want to see how all that goes. But at some point, I will probably, oh, I don't know, do I want to? You've got to let me know in the comments. Do I try washing these in the machine? I, I do wash them on, hang on. Hang on, I got something in my eye. <laughs> I do wash them on on the delicate cycle in the machine, and then we hang them up to dry, so they air dry, and then um, I'll do like fifteen or twenty minutes in the dryer on the air dry setting, and it helps tumble out a lot of the uh, the dog hair. That, that the socks just, just pick up because we have a dog and that's the way it goes when you have a dog that sheds uh, their, their fur. So um, yeah, I don't know, I'm scared to do that because the last uh, pair of hand spun socks I put in the washing machine, they shrink and they do not fit anymore and I do not want that to happen. But at the same time, uh, if I could, Wash them in the machine, that would be pretty awesome. So we'll see. But yeah, I spun that up. 
I made a video about it. I knit, I knit up my socks, so I used up a lot of that yardage already. And now it's out of my stash and in a usable, um, a usable object, a, a garment, these socks. So I have a lot left over because this was only about three ounces of yarn to do this project. Um, and I bought eight ounces of this fiber. So I was like, hey, I tried the three ply and now I'm gonna go for a two ply. So I have my singles spun up here for my two ply and they've been sitting around resting while I just haven't had time to ply them. <laughs> so they've been sitting on my mantle above the fireplace in the living room teasing me. Uh, but I have my two singles here and that's not going to focus very well, but I spun them to be uh, as close as I could possibly get to the singles I spun for the three ply. And so what I want to do is compare because the three ply, while it looks like a fingering weight yarn and uh, on the wraps per inch tool seems like a fingering weight yarn. It did not knit up like a fingering weight yarn uh, because it has three plies in there instead of two, it's got more weight to it. So the grist turned out to uh, be, you know, a thicker yarn than fingering weight. And that is how it knit up. Um, so I want to see how how much this changes if I go from three plies to two? Am I going to, you know, achieve the goal of fingering weight yarn and I just need to stick with two plies? Um, and then how do those sacks hold up compared to the three ply? I don't know. We shall, we shall see how many of those questions I can answer with this little experiment. And then, I mean, and I just showed you, I've got those two singles on those bobbins, uh, but I still have more fiber here. So we shall see what happens with those Rolex. I may hang on to them to use in another project where I combine it with other fibers. I may just keep making more two and three ply yarn. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so that's in progress. Um, that that project so for knitting I finished a sweater <laughs> I finished a sweater this sweater was started back in November uh, last year 2021 and it is now well right now in filming it's June 2022 but I did finish this garment towards the end of May 2022. So, November, December, March, April, May. So seven months for this sweater. So, uh, this sweater is called, uh, the pattern is called Mellow, and the designer is Camilla Vaud, and I purchased this pattern off of Ravelry. So I'm not going to go into super details about the pattern because it is not mine and I did have to pay uh, for the pattern. Right, but I do want to share some things, of course. <laughs> uh, so I, if you've been watching the channel a while, you, you've heard some of these things before, right? The pattern was written for uh, mohair yarns so either 100% mohair and then some of them with like a blend and I did not have any mohair in my stash at all and I wasn't sure how I would feel about it and I didn't want to go out and buy any in fact this spin was the very first time I ever worked with mohair turns out I like it <laughs> but uh, so I did yarn substitutions so first of all I did yarn substitutions which can always drastically change a pattern you should 
now be able to tell where this conversation is going. <laughs> and then my gauge wasn't quite uh, lining up with the needle sizes and, and the size that I wanted to fit my body, so I made some modifications to the stitch counts uh, in order to uh, achieve that gauge. And uh, no, I couldn't get gauge, so I modified the stitch count based off the gauge I was getting. That's it, right? Um, and I liked the fabric I was seeing in my gauge swatch that I created, and so I wanted to go with that. So I changed the stitch counts in the pattern to go with the gauge that I was knitting at when I started this project. So that made the pattern way more complicated to follow and read because I wasn't just following along. I was also having to do the math along the way. Now, I teach math for a living, so math doesn't scare me, but it does still take time. And uh, trying to think three steps ahead always, because I can change the numbers here, but what what part of the garment am I working on and what else might that impact? Oh, so, um, yeah, it just made this project take a really long time. And then, uh, first of all, the fabric looks so awesome. It is such a clean, slick, like super fancy fabric. It looks so nice. Um, even if I had not changed the numbers, if I had not done yarn substitutions, um, it still would have taken a long time to knit just because of how the pattern works. Okay. There was a lot of yarn tangling and yarn untangling of the three skeins <sighs> because sometimes some of the strands are knit together and sometimes they're not and whenever you knit more than one strand together they get wrapped around each other and then you have to separate to knit them separate and so <sighs> there was a lot of time spent untangling the yarn and it interrupts that flow of just knit, 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 right? potato chip, even throw some pearls in there. But you gotta stop and untangle your yarn. It just slows down that whole process, right? So that also added to the fact that this took so long. Now, um, let me stand up and show you this the sweater, okay? See if we can get, oh yeah, there we go, okay. So I made this with the intention that I wanna wear this at work. And I think it looks very professional. I'm totally going to wear this at work in the fall when it's chilly again, you know, and, and not 70 degrees outside. Now, when I tried this on before blocking, cause it grew in blocking, it did hit me here ish around here so you can see that it did grow in blocking now a like six, six inch swatch that I created which I did wash and block did not grow like that but I know from watching podca other podcasts out there that when there's there's a lot more weight here so of course it's going to Anyway, so it's longer now, but you guys, look how long this shirt is. Like, I like, I like that length. So I actually find that to be almost a happy accident. Like, I liked where it was hitting me before. I like where it's hitting me now. I think it looks great, right? Cool. You know, I teach, so I'm going to have my back turned. Oh, it's fantastic. Okay, problem.
What happened? I mean, you can't even see. We're not talking like, oh, my sleeve is just, a, you know, it's too long because my thumb can't even come out. Um, dude, my whole freaking hand is in here. And look, my hand is like two inches in there. <laughs> okay. So when I changed my stitch counts, all right, I did not change the, um, I did not modify for the length. I modified for the width, but the sleeves, I followed the pattern for the largest size written in there. I just knit it as is. But yeah, it grew lengthwise, just like the body did, but I do not like where the sleeves are hitting me. This is not functional. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now, um, this was knit in pieces, so um, it, it's bottom up. So I started down here, right, and knit up, and, and then that's all you know, back and forth flat across the body. And then you get to the sleeve and you split. So I had to knit the front panel on this side, the front panel on this side, and then the back, right? And then up here, it's sewed together on that edge. Oh, look at that, it looks so nice up here. Ah, uh, this is my first time sewing uh, pieces together. I've never knit a garment in in pieces before and had to sew them together this is a first so um i couldn't try this on as i was going um i tried it on at the end <laughs> uh yeah so i just don't know what to do about these sleeves i mean i can roll them up the left one is even longer than the right one, and I think that's just blocking. So if I roll the left one up twice, and the right one up once, so I rolled once, rolled twice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can I could make it work. Like if if tomorrow was a chilly day. I could wear this to work like this and uh, and be fine. But trying to think of a long-term solution. I mean, my husband, who doesn't knit, but he was like, it seems obvious, right? You just cut the sleeve and then redo the edge along there, right? Which, yeah, does make some sense. Um, I mean, there's all these sleeve decreases that were going on, and that is a good uh, diameter down there. It's all sewed together, you guys. So let me just tell you right now, I do not want to just completely re-knit sleeves. Actually, no, this does not have a bunch of decreases because I did knit straight for a while down here. That could work. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, I would not say that this pattern is beginner friendly. I think you need to have uh experience knitting um sweaters uh be able to read three steps ahead because i did stop reading in the instructions you know and then do this x number of times and i thought okay well that's the end of those set of instructions and then the very next sentence which i didn't read so I did those repeats X number of times. Turns out the next sentence says, but the exception being, <laughs> or something like that. 
except when <laughs> or but on the last time only do and it's like oh why didn't i read the next sentence so there were a couple of times where i had to rip back a little bit because i didn't read the full set of instructions but um anyway Overall, I'm very happy with the outcome. This has a lot of yardage I have not calculated yet, so I will um, have to do that. And I guess, <sighs> yeah, it's it's going to use so much. This has used so much out of my stash. So I, um, I do have a little bit left over. So this is all I have left. I've got one of each color. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, this is a uh, a silk, this one here, and it was one big cake, and this is what's left. Quite a bit is left, actually. And uh, these two are both Knit Picks palette, and I did use more of the darker color than the lighter, which makes sense because the darker is what was used in the... Um, all the edges, the cuff, uh, the collar here, bordered, and, and down at the bottom as well. So what I did is as I was, oh, see, I got, I got my needles, because there were two different needle sizes there in the bag, and I've got all my tags in here. <laughs> So I set aside my uh, all the yarn. So all the yarn was in this bag. Pretty much the sweater was never in here, let's be honest. That's how it usually goes in my house, is my knitting actually just sits on tables all over the place. Uh, but whenever I uh, took a new ball and took the tag off it, I made sure to keep it in the bag so I could keep track of things. Even my little swatches in here. And see, doesn't it look nice? <laughs> Maybe I should have used that while blocking. Anyway. But yeah, I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tags of these Knit Picks palette. Of course, two of those are these. So I use definitely six whole balls of this yarn. Each of these balls has 231 yards. So 231 yards times six is just the Knit Picks palette. And then I used a whole bunch of this lace weight um, silk yarn, which is scrumptious lace. And this started out as a total of 1093 yards and I have this much left started out as a hundred grams mm -hmm. I mean I'll have to weigh it but so yeah a lot a lot of knitting went into this sweater and I I sound disappointed because for all the work that went into it, I wanted this thing to be like done now at this point. Like I've been knitting this thing for seven months on and off and untangling yarn almost every step of the way. And I sewed it all up. You know, I did my due diligence of knitting the gauge swatch, washing it, blocking it, redoing the stitch counts. I just am, I am a bit disappointed in myself that the that the sleeves are, are way too long but just one more step and and it would be done and i would not ever have to worry about it again but now it's a matter of the motivation to get that done but yeah you guys it is so oh it is so cool this uh this cardigan it feels super comfy. Um, it's, not, it's not too big. It's not too small. It looks professional. 
so I can wear it at work. It's going to be fantastic. I mean, that's pretty much all the knitting I've done in May has been on that sweater because I, I really just needed to focus. I just needed to focus on getting that done. Um, I made regular posts on Instagram to try to keep me motivated. So thank you if there are um, viewers out there who were keeping up with those photos and, and liking my photos and writing comments and giving me encouragement. It, you have no idea how much it helped. It really helped because I needed like that little bit of extra motivation to keep me going because it, it did just feel like such a slog at the end there. So. So thank you. Uh, so I still have a whip left over um, that I did not finish. And that is a um, baby blanket design that I'm working on. So it's knit corner to corner. And I'm doing my... I don't know, can I claim this as a signature? Has anyone else done this? Probably. I mean, I'm not that original. <laughs> but I'm using two skeins of Lion Brand Mandala, and they are uh, yarn cakes that um, color block, right? So they go from one color to another color to another color. Um, I have this much left of these two skeins. And uh, I just need to film pretty much one more, yeah, one more video while knitting this thing. And then one to put it all together for a, a tutorial to go with the pattern. But because I was super focusing on that sweater, see, this is a much easier knit. <laughs> And I knew that if I picked up this blanket instead of my sweater, I would finish the blanket and not the sweater, which would still finish a project, which is okay. But in particular, I really wanted to finish that sweater. So I'm okay with the fact that this is still a work in progress uh, and I'm going to uh, try to finish this in the month of June so that I can post the pattern, put up the tutorial video to go with it, and all of that good stuff. I already showed you. I did also squeeze in this, this whole thing, the, the fiber prep, the spinning, the knitting, uh, and the, these socks. I, um, I think I started and ripped out like three times. And one of those times, I knit these toe up, which is not my usual. Uh, but one of those times, I knit all the way up to here, right before doing the heel. Uh, and I, it was too big for my foot, so I ripped it all out, started over. <sighs> yep, so <laughs> it seems like, oh, I got a sweater and a pair of socks done and that's it, but... I didn't, I knit and tore it out and re-knit and tore it out and re-knit and uh, there's a lot of knitting that's unaccounted for here in the ripping out and starting over. Uh, but yeah, and then I also have a hat. I think it's in the other room. Let me get it. So I've knit uh, a few baby blankets out of the Lion Brand Mandala yarn and uh, had a little bit of leftovers, it seems like, each time. And it's enough that I feel like I should be able to do something with it. Uh, so I thought I'd give um, some hats a try. So uh, the pattern is Brioche Starter Hat. And now I can't remember if it's a free pattern. I feel like it's a free pattern, but I'll tell you on the screen if it's not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I uh, 
Used up a couple of, so I did the pairing of two yarns together from two different of the Lion Brand Mandala colors. It's hard to tell uh, with this navy blue uh, being the dominant color on this side that there are actually color changes going on on the other yarn. Like, you really can't tell that. Which does look kind of neat when you put the hat on. It seems like it's just two colors of yarn. Uh, but I really like the decreases on the top of the hat. It just um, looks completely seamless, you know. But that decrease is not... Uh, the easiest thing when you read it in the pattern um, yeah you're gonna make that face like you want me to do what <laughs> but in the pattern is a link to a video where you can also follow along in the video with the words because you're doing a lot of you're doing a lot of this then move the stitch to the other needle and then do that and then move back to the other needle and then do this and so uh, reading that in the pattern I was like I'm, I'm sorry, how many times am I doing this? Uh, so I watched the video and then it just clicked for me. So thank you for folks out there who um, create the videos to go along with the pattern because it, it helps. Uh, yeah, so once I watched the video, it was seemed straightforward to me and I just went with it. And the top looks really cool. And being a brioche, stitch hat and it's reversible and so hopefully now you can see that there are in fact some color changes going on here in the second color uh, which is neat and so there's those decreases on this side it just looks like two are coming together which is neat <laughs> Um, but I like it this way, especially since uh, our school colors are blue and gray, like navy blue and gray. So if I ever go to a, see I got my hair bun in there, but <laughs> if I ever go to a um, baseball game or something, uh, we have baseball and soccer basketball, tennis, we're a two-year college, um, and we also offer some four-year degrees. What else we have? We, of course, have the arts, drama, and music, and I love going to those, but I'm not going to wear a hat, but yeah, um, I like it. Now, in the pattern picture um the model oh yeah maybe she's just wearing it up higher let's say it looks like she's got like extra space in the top of her hat that's probably it she's just wearing it up higher than i am i was thinking gosh i must have a ginormous head because when i put it on i fill the whole thing up but i think it's because i'm <laughs> i'm wearing it down so far here we go um, yeah, I like it. So if I turn around, are you going to be able to see? I'll find out in editing if you can actually see <laughs> the crown decreases up there. Uh, but yeah, I love it. I think this is a super cool hat. I was thinking I would make it to give away, but I think I'm going to keep it, honestly. But I have other scraps I can use. Speaking of which, I started another hat. Oh, actually, no, I'm going to save this because technically I started this one in June. So pretend I never said anything about a second hat. <laughs> okay. Well, now that I have my hair down, I'm going to keep this hat on. Uh, let's see what else. Oh my gosh, I have acquisitions I have to show you.
Guys, this month has included some retail therapy. <laughs> okay, first of all, I got a gift from my sister. They are playing cards that are yarn themed. And it looks like you can pick these up at Hobby Lobby. <laughs> um, <laughs> look at this. So there's, uh, so the numbers in the corner are um, skeins of yarn. And of course you've got your traditional symbols, suits. Uh, clubs, diamonds, uh, spades, we're missing hearts, oh there they are, hearts. Uh, but you can see they're not the traditional just red and black, so we've got like a burgundy, uh, beautiful gold color, one of my favorites, uh, navy blue, and green what would i call this not not forest green because i feel like forest green's darker i don't know it's a beautiful green uh but yeah <laughs> so um my sister sent me these as a gift for teacher appreciation week which i appreciate <laughs> uh and like I said, I teach math, and uh, one of the topics I really enjoy covering is probability. And I'll bring in playing cards, I bring in dice. I also play Dungeons and Dragons, I've got lots of dice. And, and we play um, probability games, do fake gambling. Uh, we'll even look at like scratch off tickets and what's the chance of you winning, and it's uh, super fun. And hopefully, I don't get anyone addicted to gambling in that lesson. <laughs> well, one of the things I um I did purchase for myself is, oh my gosh, okay. My mom sent me some cotton, like cotton on the plant still, cotton. And I think I showed you guys, I, um, I'm, I'm looking at the cotton over there. It's, it's my next project one of my next projects I'm lining up for myself uh, and that's to process the cotton and make yarn out of it and then I'm going to weave um, some towels that's my plan but um, before I actually spun that up on the wheel I was uh, doing some research into spinning cotton and you need to give cotton like a lot of twist and so um, some folks were doing it just fine on their spinning wheel they also used for wool and some folks were saying you need different tools and, and whatnot. Well, I fell down the rabbit hole and I picked up something from Conserving Threads, uh, Handcrafted Vintage and Repurposed Textiles. And uh, so I got this off of Etsy, so Conserving Threads is the name of the shop, and it comes, it comes in this package that makes it look like there are pastries in it, or donuts, or muffins, or some other delightfully sugary, carbolicious goodness. And Alicia, me, loves carbs, breads, sweet treats. Mm. So, <laughs> uh, it, it, yeah, so you can see not only is there cotton in here, but there is a spindle and underneath the sticker is a bowl. And I just noticed this sticker on the back. So this is uh, listed on the shop as a gift set. So if there is a cotton spinner in your life or someone who would be interested in trying this or whatever, it's a cute little gift set, and like I said, it comes in this adorable bakery packaging, which is so sweet. 
Um, so the, the spindle bowl is hand painted, comes with a um, tockly spindle and of course one ounce of cotton fiber. So I did, I did open this up because it doesn't come with some of the cotton already spun, but I did open this up and I did give it a whirl. Yes, I gave it a whirl. Uh, but that's the bowl I picked out. I'll tell you guys, yellow's my favorite color. And like the like a golden yellow is my favorite color. And that's right there, boom, in the middle of the bowl. So this is the one I picked out. Um, yeah, plus it's got the blues and greens in the outside, and I love those too. Uh, so yeah, so it's a ceramic bowl. It give you a, it's like the size of the palm of my hand, so uh that's the hardest thing about buying online is you want to make these adorable uh, photographs to present your handcrafted items uh, and setting something next to a ruler is one thing, but next to something I can just already know. So it's the size of the, the palm of my hand. Um, like that. And there's this little that's another thing. These spindles look so huge in the pictures online. It is not that big. Okay, this is like maybe six inches or something, um, but you can see it next to my face. It's only, it's only this big. Okay, <laughs> this thing is like the size of a quarter. So if you have a quarter at home, um, but yeah, so I gave it a whirl and I tried some spinning on here. It is not as easy as it looks but I was having fun and then I stopped spinning so I could show you this before I, you know, spun it all up. So now that I've shown you, I have picked this up um, and I have a bowl I can use with um, other spindles as well, which is very nice. But uh, yeah, this cotton is super soft and it's in this cute little packaging. I did have to, <laughs> I had this sitting out on one of the tables in the living room because that's where I was using it. And uh, my husband was like, I keep thinking you have donuts over there. <laughs> and we go over to the box and it's definitely not donuts inside of there. So you need to move that box somewhere else because now all I can think about are donuts. So, <laughs> so it had to come in here. Uh, but yeah, so I picked that up. And then... Uh, I ordered some more fiber, this time um, some wool, because there was a sale going on. So this shelf right here, right here, all this right here, that's all new to the stash. So let me grab it. I can show you what I got. Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> so... Uh, Napa Valley Fibers. Yeah, Napa Valley Fiber. I think it's not plural. Uh, was having a huge sale online. And so I bought one, two, three, four, five braids at what seems like a way too low of a price um, to purchase fiber for. But I got a few different things. So here's some. Uh, Cheviot Scottish Blackface Blend in um, this. It's not as bright a color as Chartreuse. Because Chartreuse is kind of like bright and vibrant, right? It's like a muted. What do, you call, what do you call that color? I don't know the names of these fancy colors, but it is like a greenish um, a greenish yellow with a bit of brown in it. Okay. And my thought was, here's my thought when I was ordering it online. We'll see how it pans out. Is that here's another of the same blend, Cheviot Scottish Blackface Blend. And this is pretty solid. It's like, uh, it's like mauve. It's a pinkish brown. Color, and there's some variation actually on the back side there. Hard to capture it on camera. 
Uh, and then, really, this was the one that caught my eye. This is just Chevy hand dyed here. But this has a bit of that mauve in it, like a mauve like, uh, like gray. Like a brownish gray almost in with, with the pink. And so I thought these kind of went together. And I thought this would make, uh, this could potentially be a sweater. And so it could be like a fade type of sweater. It does make me think of the Find Your Fade shawl that Andrea Maury made with like yellows and pinks. And it's very pretty. Uh, but yeah, I was thinking maybe, maybe this would be enough for a sweater. We'll see. And that those colors would go very nicely together. And then the prices were just way too good to only get three. So for pretty much no extra shipping cost at all, I got two more. <laughs> because why not? Uh, so this is just Cheviot and this is Cheviot Blackface. Um, so I got all warm colors and I am usually a cool color person with like blues and greens. These are all warm. Yeah. Uh, but I think it'll be, I think it will be fantastic. So yeah, I got those. <laughs> so I have added 20 ounces, 21 ounces to my stash uh, between the cotton and the wool. So yep. And I got another spindle out of it. So like I said, the month of May has been very kind to me. Uh, I feel good. I feel happy. Um, did a little retail therapy. Also finished a really big project. And yeah, I got to do a little sweater surgery there at the end. But uh, all in all, I finished the hard part, which was knitting it, sewing it, finishing, weaving in. There were so many ends to weave in as you can imagine. Uh, so I got all that done. So I think the only thing left to do is the giveaway, of course. <laughs> so if you commented on the last monthly video, which would be the April makes episode, uh, I'm going to draw a random winner right now uh, from the comments. And that person will win a pattern off of Ravelry of your choosing up to the value of $10 US. Um, so the winner will send me a message letting me know which pattern they have picked out uh, that they would like for me to purchase for them as a gift and, uh, and I will buy it for you. <laughs> uh, it doesn't have to be one of my patterns, it can be from anyone and uh, what makes this kind of giveaway really nice is that you'll get your, your prize quickly. There's no shipping cost, <laughs> no shipping delay. Uh, you'll get it right away. Uh, so from the comments on the April Makes video, I ran YouTube random comment picker and the winner is... Pausing. The winner is Linda E. Linda E. Uh, and Linda wrote, I love your baby blanket. I have yet to try Lion Brand Mandala. I want to. It's super fun. Uh, so thank you, Linda, for your comment. I really appreciate it. Um, so all you need to do is send me a message on Instagram or Ravelry. My contact information is down below in the description box. Uh, if you click on the link tree link, all my stuff is there. Um, but uh, yes, uh, send me a message letting me know which pattern you would like me to purchase for you off of Ravelry. If you are not messing messaging me on Ravelry, 
then please include your Ravelry username because that's how patterns get sent to folks is by your username. Uh, but if just to make it easier, if you want to send me a message on Ravelry, it will already include your username in the message <laughs> and I will know who to send it to. Uh, but yes, uh, you want a pattern prize. Yay. So for the next giveaway, uh, while I just said all the great things about a digital giveaway, I think what I'm going to do this time is a physical item. If you're okay with that. <laughs> as I fill my room with physical items. Uh, and that will that prize will be uh, geared towards uh, spinners of the channel. So it will be a fiber giveaway. And I'm thinking that I would like to share some of these Rolex with you. Um, Yes, I have quite a bit here uh, to share. Uh, so I don't know, I, I don't know how much I have here. I have to weigh it, but it will definitely be at least an ounce, if not two, uh, of fiber. And so, uh, yeah, all you have to do to enter to win is uh, leave a comment down below on this video right here, May Makes. Uh, and the comments can be about anything. In particular, if you have suggestions on what to do about my sweater sleeves, I'd love to hear about it. But really, you can comment on anything uh, at all. Uh, I'm going to, as much as I don't want to do this, I'm going to limit this to just U.S. Res uh, residents. Is that the right word? Uh, somewhere where I can, I can ship to a U.S. address and not be shipping internationally. Uh, I do not like to do that, but I think for this giveaway, I am going to. Uh... I'm hemming and hawing because I really hate doing that. Um, but yeah, for this giveaway, um, to, to folks who have a, a place I can ship to in the United States, <laughs> whether you live here or you, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> uh, but I, I want to ship to somewhere in the United States uh, for this giveaway. Uh, and it will be a uh, fiber. Uh, Romney mohair blend already prepped up in Rolex for you. Uh, so if you're interested or if you know a, a friend who would be interested and you'd like to win this for them to give them as a gift, uh, that's cool too. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be the prize next time. So leave a comment down below and in the June makes video, I will announce the winner of that giveaway. So thank you everyone for sticking around with me. I think this is a long one, I imagine. I had a lot to talk about. <laughs> so until I see you again, uh, stay safe, uh, stay, stay well, stay happy, and enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. <laughs> Bye everyone. <laughs>